I told you. I told you. I told you. And I've been telling you this. I've been telling you this, what you about to see for years. Now, since it's coming straight out the horse's mouth, some of y'all gonna believe it. Some of y'all don't wanna believe it. And I get it. It's flattering. You know, it makes people feel good. People love compliments. So, of course, people are going to love the drum beat, the narrative that's been going on over the last past year or so, that everybody's out in the streets and protesting and looting and all this stuff is about people that look like me. All of this on the front lines. And all of this kneeling and all that stuff and all this rah-rah stuff is literally about me. And these people really care about me. And that's why they're doing it. And I get it. Who wouldn't want to think that? That's the game. That's how you game somebody in relationships. You make them feel like you really care about them. And then you use them for whatever you want, whatever ulterior motive you have, whether it be whatever. So, I mean, this is a common trope in life. Unfortunately, we're unable to see it when it comes in this form of political and activism. So, Claudia Jordan, the biracial sensation <laughs> star activist who's been on the breakfast club more times than any rapper who's just you know got her own show on Fox so it's funny how they got their show on Fox but it's it's cool it's cool that they got their show on Fox Fox so because it's Fox so you go on Fox, regular Fox, you, you do anything with Fox, you sell out, you Uncle Tom, you can't, you can't. Claudia Jones get her own show on Fox, nobody say nothing. Fine. Fox soul. You know, you got soul. Okay. But Claudia jo Jordan is going to tell you what I've been telling you for years. Do want to know from you, Claudia, like how do you, as a biracial woman, like how do you navigate through all the racial things that are going on right now? I'm glad we're having this conversation because I feel like a lot of times when you're biracial, you are um, forced to make a, a choice at some point. And my family didn't do it. It was actually outside people. It was outside the house. It was in school. Me too. And now, a lot of us that have a white mom, black dad, if the dad's not around and you were raised by your white mother, your mother is the one that raised you, right? And she's your mom. And it's almost like you're damned if you claim her proudly and loudly because they'll think you're one of those black girls that doesn't consider herself black. And then if you, and for me, I made me be like, oh, extra cold black. I was in the gospel choir, the black student alliance. I was, I went to the million man march. I, I OD'd with it because I'm like, I feel like I had to constantly prove my blackness. Like I almost had to dis, like disown publicly my mom, and that's not right. So it's like. I, I feel like uh, this conversation, this issue doesn't get taken as seriously because of the light skin privilege that does exist in America. No one wants to really hear it. They're like, yeah, 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 whatever. Like, blah, 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 boo-hoo, bad life you had. But it's a complex thing. Look, salute to Claudia Jordan, man. I think that she was very honest, very candid, and that's what we asked for. And it's, it's wrong to beat up somebody when they've been honest. I hate that. I hate that when we ask people to be honest and then they give us the truth and then we beat them up because we didn't really want the truth. And there's a lot of people that did not want this truth. Um, yes, biracials, they go extra hard in the paint. Not because they care about the cause or because they're moved by the spirit of the times 
or because they really think the propaganda that black people can't jog without getting attacked by a supremacist, they can't leave a house without getting attacked by a Nazi, everything's racist, everybody's racist, systemic, institutional, everywhere you look, under every rock, around every corner. They don't, they're not doing it for those reasons. They're doing it for personal reasons. Many times. And there's always exceptions. But they're doing it for personal reasons. The same reason why a black, fully black person may do it because it's personal. <laughs> yeah, it's personal. But th they're doing it for personal reasons too. Because it's I want to prove that I've been I've been told that I can't be white. There's no there's, there's just not an option. I'm stained. If you got three percent African blood, white people are like nah, nah, you, we good. And I get the one drop rule back in the 1800s, but it all so we're going by everything that in the 1800s, right? Because I hear a lot of black folks say, well, that's because of the one-drop rule in the 1764. Oh, so we're going by 1764 rules. Don't just pick and choose what you want to keep from 1764. Let's just take all of it from 1764. So there was a rule back in the 17th century and 18th century that if you had one drop of black, white, black blood, you was, you was, you was a black person. Now there's starting to be a wellspring. It's only on YouTube, <laughs> not on, not anywhere else, not in real life, but on YouTube and other social media platforms. That like, yo, look, man, we not all the same, man. <laughs> like. You different, bro, because you got one parent. You raised by Karen, man. Maybe the Karen, the whole Karen craze in 2020. The whole Expo Karen got put on the front lines in 2020. Maybe that's the, what did it. The fact that, like, yo, y'all raised by Karen, man. <laughs> and then you look more like a Karen than you do a black person. Like, you was raised by a Karen, a whole Karen, like, all your life and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And you've been forced by society to fit into this black culture because white folk won't accept you. And you don't want to say that you're mixed race because there's no, like, there's no, there's nothing there for you. You come to the black side, man, you, you exalted, man. First black vice, it's no, it's no coincidence that the first black vice president is a woman with like 8% black DNA. The first black president is obviously you can tell he's 50% black DNA, but he's biracial, raised by a white woman. The first black everything, if you go down the line, look at um, the first black person to say, man, I'm not giving up my seat was allegedly a biracial person. Even though we know a bunch of sisters was like, I ain't giving up my seat. But they chose the one. They tried to act like all these dark-skinned women with all this attitude and unfeminine and they ain't get they own they, they talk too much and they got all this mouth and red bones is so feminine and submissive that the first person to ever... <laughs> The first person to ever say, man, look, look here, white man, I'm not giving up my seat, was a biracial woman.
all them bus rides, all them buses, back and forth every day, round the clock. The first person to ever say, <laughs> look, man, nah, cracker, you ain't getting my seat. It's a biracial one. Well, we know that's not true. We know that was plenty of us, like call that Colvin and just different, um, different women, but whatever. The first you get to be the first black to do everything is always gonna be a biracial, and the one exalted is always gonna be a biracial. Look at the biggest stars of the '70s. They talk about black exploitation movies. The biggest stars of the 70s black exploitation movies, the biggest male star was Ron O'Neill. The biggest female star was Jane Kennedy. So, of course, when it comes to activism, <laughs> activism, the top is going to be somebody who's Biracial, the number one, and I'm not talking about what you think. I'm talking about what the streets say, the YouTube followers, the donations, the reach, the publicity, top activists are usually biracial. And the reason they're doing it ain't got nothing to do with trying to free you from oppression of not being able to jog without getting attacked. <laughs> without being able to go to the store without the, the person at the store. Because you know when you go to the store, the person can come up to you and, 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 and just follow you around. Because, you know, that's what be happening, right? And you be getting pulled over every day, all the time, right? For no reason. <laughs> That's your life, right? They not trying to save you from that. They trying to assert their blackness and prove that they black. Okay? They trying to prove that they black. And also the white liberal. I have to, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't call you out and put you on the summer jam screen. As you guys protested all summer, and I'm sure you're gonna, you know, if 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 Biden, the fact that Biden ain't doing nothing for black folk, become an issue at any point, y'all gonna start the racism stuff back up to distract us. If if black folk ever come to their senses and say, wait a second, the first hundred days of the plan that Biden and his black vice president came up with. There's not a thing in there for black people. I'm not talking about like there's only a little bit in there. There's no thing in there for black people who are not criminals. Now, if you're if you're trans or you're a criminal, which I guess now all black people are, and I've been around the street, all you niggas ain't criminal. At night. It don't, it be a certain few on the block. Hey, all y'all ain't out there. This whole notion that the whole black community standing out on the block, Jamel Hill and <laughs> D-Ray out on the block at 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> when the action is starting, when the police is out there, <laughs> Jack, jacking brothers up in the action really thick. No, nah, it's a few. It's not all. Now, all y'all ain't out there, man. Many of y'all are squares, which is great. Y'all ain't out there. Y'all ain't getting no police action. Nothing. Nothing. But white liberals gonna, if, 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 if we ever come to our senses that Ain't nothing gonna be done for us under this democratic um, presidency. They're gonna distract us again with some marching and protesting. And brothers, 
real brothers from the streets, they know you not out there for them. Yes, the educated lames, and that's why they call them educated lames, not because being educated is a bad thing, but because that's the group that's tied to the Democratic Party, that's tied to the Joe Bidens of the world. That's the group that's the educated group. Brothers on the streets know that these white liberals coming down the street <laughs> with their signs flanked by police. I'm talking about police escort while they're marching, yelling, pigs in the blanket, frying like bacon. What do we want? Dead cops. What do we want them now? Hands up, don't you? Don't, they're being flanked by police. And I'm glad that a lot of people got, more people got started in protesting in 2020 because you got to see, like, there's police following these people. You're, you're protesting in democratically run cities where the gun laws are stringent and law-abiding citizens like these white liberals and these black church folk, the clergy and congregation from the church and these black students from these colleges are not packing illegal guns. So... The gun laws is so strict in these places. And you're marching through Harlem. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. You're marching through Northeast, Northwest DC. 10 o'clock at night. Marching through the Russell neighborhood of Louisville, Frazier neighborhood of Memphis, the South Bronx. Sandtown in Baltimore, Opalaka in Miami. You're marching through these neighborhoods. <laughs> Walnut Park <laughs> in St. Louis. At night, a bunch of unarmed, pasty white liberals and a bunch of people from the black church in the local HBCUs. <laughs> You damn right they got police with them, and a lot of them. So the brothers in the hood know that it ain't for them. As everyone knows, I was with I was in Charlottesville when that happened. I was I was down there, and you know I was in in the thick of the march. I was an observer. I don't I I've been to so many of those things as an observer. And nothing ever happened. And there was no no reason to think that Charlottesville was going to be Charlottesville. No one thought that that was going to be that day. Charlottesville was going to be Charlottesville. No one knew that. No one knew that that guy, that, that all that was going to happen. That somebody was going to bust his windshield with a brick. And he was going to go crazy and run into the crowd. Nobody knew that. However, I've been to a lot of these things, man. A lot of these things. And at Charlottesville, when we were going, we, it happened on 4th and Water Street. I always remember. Um, I think it's 4th and Water Street. Um, Water Street. We were going, we were originally going to walk through the projects. I wasn't leading them nothing. I was in the back just walking. We were originally going to walk through the projects. And when the group, the bands, it was a bunch of white people and a bunch of Black Lives Matter came to the projects in Charlottesville. Anybody who was there can, 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 you know, amen this. Can co-sign this. The dudes at the projects seen all them police with us. <laughs> we had like a thousand cops with us because, you know, it's not safe walking through these cities. And they was like, nah, they came up because the project is a little open and like, it's, you know, some of those projects, you got the gate where it's, the cars come in, it's a, it's a little, it's an opening. And, um, the brothers came up to the gate and they was like, nah, man, <laughs> you can't bring all the bullies in here, man, because they're making that hot, man. Them brothers is, whatever you want to say about what they doing, they doing it. And they doing it well, and that's the way they live. And they got enough problems with police for a bunch of 
people bringing all these damn police in there and being loud on blow horns and drums. They had drums. They had bull horns. Cornell West was out there. Like, um, Vice was out there. Infowars was with, was there. Everybody, all these cameras and all these police just walking through their project. And they, they working. Them brothers is working. And they came up to the front and they was like, nah. Anybody who was in Charlottesville co-signed that. So we had to turn. And when we turned, that's when we turned down that street. And that's where that white, the, the neo-Nazi got into it with some protesters. They bust his windshield with a brick. And he, like, backed up and then revved up and fought, came forward and, um, but that wouldn't have never happened if the brothers would have let us come in the project. So you brothers in the projects in Charlottesville, I don't know the name of the project. Y'all the reason <laughs> that that happened. But yeah. Did none of this stuff is about you, black folk. Well, get in the comment section, like, subscribe, donate, peace. I'm out.